Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. Your name is you. It's something so vital and instrumental in who you are. It's perhaps the single thing we share most with other people. Now imagine if it was taken from you and you weren't allowed to say your own name or other people didn't refer to you by your name. How would you introduce yourself or be introduced by other people? How would others be able to talk about you? What would be on your birth certificate or your child's birth certificate? Or even your headstone when you die? Well, while the majority of the world can freely share the name of anyone and anyone can say their name, this isn't the case for everyone on our planet. There are a group of people who aren't allowed to say their name or even be addressed by their name. I'm talking about women in Afghanistan. In this nation there's a long held tradition that a woman's name should not be shared or spoken of in a public setting and sometimes even in private too. But this doesn't just mean that their names can't be spoken, it means that their names aren't meant to be written down on various forms and papers like on wedding invites or doctor's prescriptions or even on their headstones as I alluded to. Why is this the case? Well, while Afghanistan is predominantly an Islamic nation, this seems to be a specific Afghan tradition, as there are many Muslim nations that don't have such strict naming rules for women. And this tradition is seemingly based on a lot of things. Some say it's to keep the honour of a woman by not revealing her name to the wider world, while others see it as a tradition that keeps men on top and keeps women as second class citizens. Afghan sociologist Hassan Rizayi spoke on the matter and said that this tradition comes from centuries ago, when life in Afghanistan was far more tribal. He said, according to tribal logic, the important thing is the ownership of a woman's body. The body of a woman belongs to a man and other people should not even use her body indirectly, such as looking at her. Based on this logic, the body, face and name of the woman belongs to the man. This is a traditional and cultural issue. It needs long-term cultural struggle and fight, he said. By weakening tribal cultures and awareness through the media, this type of thinking about women could be changed. He also said that reversing such deeply ingrained traditions will take a long time and will involve changing the way children are taught. Afghan political candidate Najla Habibi spoke on the matter too and explained how a woman's name can be used as a source of power for men in the nation. She said, Men are ashamed to address their wives by their names, and if a man's best friend knows his wife's name, he and that friend should stop being friends anymore. Another unknown Afghan woman too asked her male colleague about his wife's name, to which he replied, Why do you want to know my wife's name? If I tell you her name, other colleagues will know it and that is no good for my honour. So, instead of their names being used, how are women talked about or referred to? as having to talk about someone without using their name sounds like quite the challenge to myself. Well, a lot of this seems to vary depending on the woman, her age and her relation to others. In example, it seems that with young girls, like babies and children, it's okay to say their names in public. But things seem to start to change as women get older and take on different roles. It seems that the most popular way of referring to a woman is in relation to a man in her life. They could be referred to as the wife of so-and-so, or the daughter of so-and-so, or the sister of so-and-so, or even the mother of so-and-so. While this seems to be the most popular way in which women are referred to in public, there are also nicknames and titles used across the country, used in public and private. Some are more derogatory and upsetting to some women than others. In example, many women are given nicknames by their new family when they get married. These tend to mean things like sweet flower or light or just pleasant sounding like cocoa. It seems these nicknames aren't that disliked among Afghan women who have had them bestowed upon them. A name that is a bit more debated is Zanaka, meaning little woman. This was reportedly used a lot in the past but has now become rarer. While many see this as an insulting term, there are also women who have said they don't mind it. However, terms like Zafai, meaning weak woman, and Ajiza, meaning helpless, are seen as much more derogatory and aren't used anywhere near as much as they used to be in the nation. Together, they're seen as translating into English as the weaker sex, so it's easy to see why Afghan women don't want this name applied to them. But if you're interacting with a woman you've just met, and have no relation to them or don't know them personally or any of the men in their life personally either. Well, there have been terms created for situations like this too. The most popular of these being CSR, which can be used in passing for women that you are interacting with briefly. E.g. when on a bus, the driver might say, please could you make some space so this CSR may sit down. The term of CSR means blackhead and most likely refers to the predominant hair colour of the nation. There is something of a male equivalent to this too with Rish Safid, meaning white beard for old men. It seems that the name of CSR has something of a mixed reaction. Some find it demeaning while others don't. However, I read it can be extremely controversial if a woman calls another woman this name. Other terms for women to be used in public include Mada and Kala, meaning mother and maternal aunt respectively, to be used for older women. Krawa, meaning sister, is to be used for women of a 
similar age to you. And Bibi Haji is used for women who have made the Haji pilgrimage and for older women in general. It seems that these terms aren't seen as that controversial and they aren't that unlike terms we have in English like Miss and Ma'am for women we interact with briefly. However, some of the more interesting names are the ones husbands use for their wife when in public. These include ayal, meaning wife and children, but men use it when referring to just their wives. There's also the somewhat similar mada i aladha, which means mother of the children. While these names seem to present women as little more than wives and mothers, there are also terms that shine a light on the role of women too. One like korwadana, meaning house builder. This is seen as a title of honor and shows the important role women play in creating and caring for family. However, it can also be seen as a limiting a woman to just her home and her family. It seems that the most polite term is Khanum, which is the female form of Khan and just means lady. But what about in documents? As I said earlier, actual names aren't used in forms, so what is put in their place instead? Well, on birth certificates, traditionally the name of the child's mother was not written. However, more recently, adding the mother's name has become optional, but not compulsory. On marriage invites, just miss can be used, or once again, the woman is presented in relation to a man in her life, like being called the daughter or mother of so-and-so. And this same naming rule applies to funeral invitations and gravestones too, when just wife slash daughter slash mother of so-and-so used. Names cannot even be present on doctor's prescriptions or ID cards. Residents of the nation have talked about these name rules on documentation. Financial manager Sahabanu Muradi told a story about her uncle's wedding. They said, the men in our family are very secretive about women's names, even on wedding invitation cards or tombstones. When my uncle got married, the bride's full name was actually written on the invitational card, Razia Sultani. Then our family, particularly my maternal uncle, crawled a lot and called her a shameless lady. And a quote I found particularly eye-opening came from Batul Mohammadi. She said, I went to a private bank office to fill up the form. When the manager asked my mother's name, I paused for a few seconds because I'd actually forgotten my mother's name. Nobody in all these years asked or called her by her name. And that's a good selection of the variety of names women are referred to as in Afghanistan in public and private life. Though a lot of these do vary across the languages and regions of the land too. The amazing article I got most of this info from will be linked down below, you can check it out for yourself. But by now I'm sure you have something of a more clear idea of the roles of names in this land. But I do wonder what are the actual views people living in Afghanistan have on these naming traditions. After all, I'm just some guy on the other side of the world compared to Afghanistan, just sharing what information I've found on this subject. I'm not from Afghanistan, I've never been there, so I literally have no personal experience of this. Luckily, many women from the nation have shared their thoughts on these naming traditions. I've already shared some quotes in this video, but having these quotes allows us to understand the more real-world implications of this tradition and how it affects people on our planet on a daily basis. A great place to start is with this quote from photojournalist Fazana Wahidi. She said, Many times I meet wonderful women with bright thoughts and opinions during my work trips, but when I want to interview them or take their picture, they say to me, let me ask my husband, father or brother if they allow me to talk or be pictured. It should be no surprise to hear from this quote that there are many women against this naming tradition. Lala Habibi, a woman from the city of Gunzi, said, I do not like nicknames and other words that men use to address women. I want everyone to call me by my first name. Sarah Banu Muradi agreed saying, I hate being called CSR. It's nonsense. Addressing women as CSR means they have no personality. To refer to a woman as mother, sister or wife of so and so does not have anything to do with respect. We need to work on our culture and develop it so that no woman woman is called CSR or referred to by a male relative's name. However, there are people against this change and they're happy with how things are now. A woman going by the name of Miss Mizayi, as she didn't want her to reveal her first name said, I'm never ready to tell my name to anyone because in our society, it is not necessary for everyone to know a woman's name. Others like Nuria Nida have talked about the nicknames given to women and said that they show respect, order and discipline among family members. Housewife Fatima Alavi said, do not call me by my given name. I'm not a child anymore. Call me by my eldest child's name. And another housewife called Mayim Sarari said, when I got married, my in-laws gave me the nickname Marjan. I have no problem with this. I feel respected. On top of this, youth organizer Modeza Islami wrote his thoughts on the matter on his Facebook page, writing, the name of my mother, sister, and wife are sacred like their headscarf, and it's a sign of their honor. 
So it seems that in the nation there is something of a split in public opinion on these naming traditions. Some see not using their name as a sign of respect and honour, and that the new nicknames given to women in marriage symbolise the next chapter in their life, while others see it as oppressive and belittling, and just one of the ways that women are seen as being inferior to men in the nation, and that being called the wife slash mother slash daughter of so and so stops women from having their own identity, but instead just make them an extension of the primary man in their life. It's a hot topic, and I'm sure many of you have views on it in the comments. In more recent years however there has been more demand for change. This is thanks to social media and the hashtag where is my name movement that seems to have started in 2017. Baha Sohali, a prominent member of the campaign, said that our society is full of injustice for women. Basically everything is taboo for women. With this campaign we aim to change many things for women and social media has opened a new window for Afghanistan's young generation. This movement seems to have made some good headway and even some of Afghanistan's most popular popular celebrities have talked about these naming traditions. Ariana Saeed is one of the nation's most popular singers and a strong women's rights activist. She spoke on the matter saying, a woman is first of all a human and then your wife, sister, mother or daughter, and she has the right to be recognised by her identity. And another singer called Farhad Daria has made his voice heard on the matter too. He always tries to mention his mother and wife by name at concerts and wrote about this. On many occasions, in front of a crowd that doesn't have family relations to me, I've noticed how the foreheads of men sour by what they see as my cowardice in mentioning the name of my mother or my wife. They stare at me in such a way as if I'm the leader of all the world's cowards and I know nothing of Afghans' honours and traditions, he wrote. And this shows us that while there are people speaking up against this, many still don't like the change. One such person who seems to be against the hashtag is a man by the name of Hanif Mubashir. He wrote that today with the campaign hashtag where is my name, they want their names to be mentioned everywhere. In the future, they will have another campaign hashtag where is my beauty and ask why we hide our bodies and beauty from you. We do not care if you men become sinful. Though despite this, it does seem like there has been some change. It seems that in some of the more cosmopolitan and urban parts of Afghanistan, women are being referred to by their actual names in public as well as in private, which which sounds like real change, though it seems like in the more rural parts of the country, this old tradition still stands. The rights of women in Afghanistan have fluctuated over the years and in the course of the country's history, and this tradition of women being forbidden from sharing their name is just a name-shaped window in the world of women's rights in Afghanistan for us to peer into. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just two dollars a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron-exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.